All right, I was like, just get off the mic. Just, get, just give me that. Okay, um, I have a lot of slides, and I didn't cut any of them last night because after party. So uh, we're just going to go, and we're going to just pretend that this is going to work. All right. Uh, well, we can go to my first thing here. Good, she covered most of that stuff. Um, but first, quick, I want to know, for my own edification, how many of you are users, like WordPress users? <laughs> Not <laughs> Again, different convention, that other one. <laughs> WordPress users, oh, sorry, I missed that, I was laughing at my own joke. And then developers. Okay, you all can leave. No, just kidding. Um, this talk's aimed at beginners, users, I talk to beginners and users, so uh, for the rest of you, good times. Um, so about me, uh, Greg was talking about most of it. I like to consider myself a small business advocate. I'm a passionate small business promoter, uh, a small business owner. I also love WordPress and using it for small businesses. Uh, as he said, I'm a co-host. I got that designation. I checked with Jason. It's cool. Um, on the WP Water Cooler, I'm in a band, AliciaMurphyMusic.com. Check it out. Thank you. Um, and I have a bookstore, which I'm reopening today, which is why I look so freaked out all weekend. Uh, because permits, blah, blah, blah. Check my Twitter feed. OK, so let's get going. Uh, so let's first talk about the core role of a WordPress theme. All right, so WordPress themes are made up of three WordPress themes. WordPress, in general, is made up of three core components, the content, the themes, and the plugin. Content is basically, simply, the stuff on the page. Uh, pages, posts, images, products, all of that stuff. Plugins are what that content does. Themes are how that content looks. In general, that's dealing with things like layout, styles, and the overall UI and the design. So that's, that's what's up with that. So let's talk a little bit about how these themes work. Theoretically, that being the key word. Right, developers? Yeah. And users, because you know the pain also. Um, so I made this fun little flow chart, because I really like charts. Um, and graphics. But this is my uh, take on how WordPress works. It's obviously a very simplified version. Anyone who does core dev, I'm sorry. Uh, that's not what this is for. Uh, this is for explaining to users uh, and beginner people how, how this fun thing works. Uh, but you all pretty much probably know that. You've got your admin where you, you put in all this stuff. And then you've got your winning part of all of the things, which is the database. From that lovely database, you can do awesome things like back up all your stuff. Which you, and you can do imports and exports, which you can't do in those Wix and Weebly thingies, uh, or Squarespace, or Shopify. If you, funny thing is, Squarespace exports its export files as WordPress files. <laughs> True story. Uh, and then Shopify, on its export uh, FAQ, says the most hilarious thing. It says, this isn't fancy. Open your blogs and copy and paste them one by one. <laughs> it says that, like unironically. Uh, you should check it out just for kicks. Um, but anyway, so the database, of course, being the hub of all of the things. And then all that data gets filtered through the plugins, which tell it to do certain things and jump up and down and stuff. And then the theme, ostensibly, is here, making everything look pretty. And then, voila, website. So that is the, uh, the structure of the flow, if you will. Uh, and then when we're talking, I, we already saw this slide. But basically, layout styles and overall design is what we're doing. Um, the idea of a theme. And this stems from kind of the core concept of WordPress in general, is that it's about decisions, not options. Because uh, ostensibly, you're supposed to be writing your content and managing your content and not sitting there worrying about whether or not this letter is pink and this letter is teal. Though too much to my chagrin, I, I can barely get my clients to not think about that stuff. They're like, I really want to just change this letter to green. And I'm like, please just don't, OK? Um, <laughs> So uh, for those of us who work with clients, uh, uh, kind of themes that are, are more restricted can actually be a godsend. We're like, you just can't do it. Just you can't. So don't turn it green. Um, of course, there's plugins that can change all that. But the idea, theoretically, behind themes is thus. Decisions, not options. And I think that's something we all forget a lot of the time, because we like options. Everyone's like, give us more options. Uh, but we want less options, more decisions pre-made for us. Um, so in a perfect world, you know, we'd log in to our, our WordPress dashboard, we'd go to the theme repository, uh, we'd go find a theme, we'd, we'd install it, and we'd download it, and look, then we have a theme that looks like what the, this is this guy right here, picked at random, I have not actually used that very much, just dopio sounded funny to me, with coffee. Um, and that's a good way to choose your WordPress themes, is by the name. 
because that is really, it's, a, it's really effective. Um, but Dopio, so this is what happened. And, and in a lot of cases, which is super exciting, the theme uh, repository is actually working more and more like this every day, which makes me really happy inside. Um, but the idea really behind a theme is that we're talking about three main sections at this point, the way that the, the theme is structured, is dealing with the header layout, the sidebar layout, if there are sidebars, where the sidebars are, and what are widgetized areas. This is really what's making up a theme these days because themes have really kind of, they either go way overboard or they're like super stripped down. So it's a very interesting time that we are in. Um, I thought this was pretty funny. This has been going around. Uh, have you guys seen this graphic? Because you're looking at it now, so the answer is yes, you have seen it. <laughs> Just so I go get some more coffee. Okay. Um, but this is, this is pretty much the current format of websites. I don't know if you've noticed that. Uh, so this is why this is so funny. It's like, we're unique. Find out how unique we are by clicking this button. And um, we've got our three columns here. The fun thing about this is most themes are ending up looking, looking the same these days. Um, so really, what are we even choosing between when we're choosing themes? If we can change all of the styles and the layout ourselves uh, with plugins, and we can, you know, everyone else's themes look exactly the same, I'm not really sure. Let's, let's ponder that some more. It's an existential question. Uh, but so we've got our theme directory. And I'm actually really, like I said, getting really happy about what they're doing in the theme repository. Uh, because what they're doing is they're implementing the theme customizer as a standard. This is, in theory, supposed to have already happened. And all of the themes in the theme customizer should only be using, sorry, in the theme repository, should only be using the theme customizer, this fun times guy. Um, but uh, that's not what's actually happening, obviously. There are still some themes in there that have theme options panels, which are the bane of everyone's existence. Um, so the other thing that I really love about the WordPress.org theme repository, I got the name right this time, um, is that it's also reviewing the themes for accessibility, code, documentation. They have a pretty interesting uh, review process for that, and I think they need more reviewers at all times. So if any of you are inclined, I recommend doing it. Let's make this experience better for everybody. Um, the other thing that you will find in the theme directory, as you probably all know, is that these tend to be simpler themes. They're not trying to do every which way, every which thing. Um, they're just trying to be a nice layout that you put your stuff into, which in my mind is what a theme is, so I'm happy when I'm in there. However, the reality of how themes work and they don't work is, is really real. By the way, you're supposed to read these blue texts in your head. I don't know if you got that or not. I'm not reading them for you, but you can read them out loud if you feel like it. Okay. Um, so uh, in our world of themes, we've got our free, our premium, our custom, and our builder DIY themes. We're going to talk a little bit about each of these. But first, the real caveat about how free themes work, ha, huh, freemium, uh, is the really kind of the new standard. Even there are so many awesome free plugins or free themes within the theme repository that are actually just like little tasters. And they're like, oh, sorry, did you actually want a second menu? You have to buy that. Um, so this freemium model that we're kind of in is also is great because it means that people can put out a solid product and then of course they can upgrade and, and whatnot um, and then those theme developers can stay in business which is super duper important otherwise no one's making the themes um, but it is a little uh, bait and switchy a lot of the time so you need to be careful of that and your clients need to be careful of that when they're in there in the theme repository thinking they're getting something totally for free and then oh just kidding it's kind of not really um, so the, the way themes should work, right, is you have this basic, um, oh, I just remembered I forgot something in the car. I will bring it back up afterwards. This was my reminder, so that's all I want to say. Okay, um, so you want to see me after my talk, that's all I have to say. I was going to bring them first and bribe you on sugar to like laugh more, but that didn't work out. All right, so uh, when you're doing the same basic uh, WordPress theme, the idea is, right, that you would, whether you're in this theme and then when you switch your theme over, you're just in this theme. It's the same basic thing, you know, just kind of laid out a little differently. But the reality is a lot of times it does stuff like this. And you're like, whoa, whoops, how'd that happen? Um, why is my cupcake now like a giant giraffe cupcake? I don't know. Um, that was for Carrie Lee. Um, and then, of course, there's this one. Did anyone actually like 2015? Anybody? You did? You like everything, Suzette. OK. Um, she's true. She does. She's like a super positive person. Oh, and then also sometimes this happens. Um, when you're just installing a theme, even from the theme repository, how many of you like this? Nobody? Oh, how weird. Um, you know who likes it even less? Users. 
So that's the thing. When a user is trying to install a free theme from the theme repository and they get that, um, they blame WordPress. And they're like, WordPress, you suck. Uh, it's not true. Uh, the third party developer sucks. But that's OK. Um, so in that lovely theme review process, they say one thing about themes, uh, that you're not supposed to do things in a theme that are considered plug-in territory. To that, I say, what does plug-in territory mean? Uh, it's kind of vague. There's not really any sort of definitive answer. I, I looked it up. There's not. If you Google it, you get like weird maps. Um, <laughs> so everyone Google that right now. Pay attention. No, just kidding. You can Google that. I'm good, I'm good with that. Um, but what I think plug-in territory means is any feature or content that may outlive the web design. So anything that you want to keep past whether or not you have a, you know, a big old slider or a superhero image or parallax. Um, I mean, it's fine if you have a site that is parallax. Totally cool. I have sites and clients in parallax. Our band website's in parallax, so I can't really say that, but I can totally because it's awful. Um, anyway, so if you think your theme content uh, is going to outlive um, your design or your design trend or whatever you have doing with your theme, that means that's plug-in territory because that plug-in is going to stick around. I think someone talked about that yesterday too, but uh, that's my little two cents on that. All right, so let's talk about what the real problem is. I'm going to say this one. What seems to be the problem? <laughs> it's fun if you say it out loud. Okay. Um, <laughs> It's really, the problem is the wild, wild wor wor world of WordPress. Uh, if anyone hasn't noticed, it's kind of like the Wild West out here, or like the, the 49er era when we were all out here in Cal all of us were totally here <laughs> mining for gold. Um, <laughs> the other people who were in California first that were mining for gold. Uh, that's what it's like out here. There's a lot of work if you can get your lands, your, your homestead happening, uh, but there's not always a lot of rules. Or there might be some rules, but everyone's like, screw those rules. We don't care about those. Um, and this is the, the double-edged sword of third-party development. Um, this is one of the greatest things about WordPress because we get this incredibly wide swath of awesomeness in the form of plugins and in the form of themes. It also is really one of the main problems because of the lack of standards. So even within the theme, cust or the theme repository, which is supposed to be super standardized, um, we're lacking in those standards in general, which is just very confusing from a user standpoint. Developers are fine. We all just like kind of swoop all over that. We're like, yeah, yeah, it's just a theme, so big deal. Uh, but that's not the way that it is for users. And I think that's actually kind of a problem uh, because WordPress is getting a bad rap because of all these third-party developers who think they're super clever. Um, but they're not. The difference is is that with third-party development, they want to be all things to all people. So their focus is not coming from kind of that core ethos of WordPress, which is decisions, not options. Instead, these third-party developers, I'm sorry if any of those are you, um, we can talk later, and yes, I do focus group stuff, uh, is they're coming from the perspective of options, not decisions. And the real problem with that is, is that's, that's a very American thing. Here, take all the options. But when you're dealing with, again, your content, and especially if you're a user, you don't want all those options. They are overwhelming. You can have 20 plugins that do the same exact thing. It's an overwhelming choice for, for the user. And if you have one plugin that does 20 different things, <coughs> Jetpack, <coughs> Jetpack, excuse me. Um, <laughs> I think uh, that can also be overwhelming for the user who installs it and then says, why do I need pretty math? I don't know what that means. What are all these other things? Um, coupled with a lack of instructions in a scary Facebook style way, um, it can be a really daunting experience for, um, for users. And I think that it's actually more daunting of an experience now than it used to be. Um, when, you, when you would first get in, it was a lot simpler because there weren't third party people on every corner trying to tell you to go this way or go that way or here, use this system or here, be locked in here, whatever it happens to be. Um, and the real culprit of this is uh, where this really stems from a lot is the theme options panel. Um, and I brought this up actually at WordCamp San Francisco like, I don't know, like three years ago or something crazy. Um, and they were just introducing the customizer as a main standard for everything. And I've waited very, very patiently for that to uh, become a more of a standard. Um, but it's still pretty uh, variable. And especially when you start dealing with frameworks and stuff, which we're talking about, everyone loves their own theme options panel and they're not interested in getting rid of it. Um, so I don't know philosophically what we're going to do about this as a WordPress community, but I think we need to do something about it because having this and then this, this is bad UI. This is bad for the user. It's not that this itself is bad UI. It's just bad when the WordPress experience changes so many times between each different theme. 
we can sit there and go, okay, hold on, let me figure this out for a second. Okay, I figured out where all your stuff is. And then the user's like, uh, where was that? Is there any consistency? The whole point, remember again, is that you're supposed to be able to change your theme and still have that same experience. And that's not what's going on right now. So, um, you know, just something to think about it. Something to think about. The other thing I like to think about and talk about disparagingly, are short codes. Um, I get it. I get that short codes are really, really important. They're the way to bring the code in, but they are really confusing to users. Turns out co short code, still code. If they remove a bracket, it destroys everything, and now they have text and they don't understand, and then they're like, why is everything destroyed? Where did my contact form go? Um, so we really, as a community, need to think past this guy. I know people are thinking about this, um, so think harder and faster, please. Um, <laughs> Because it's, it's not going well. I deal with a lot of different clients. They use these things called Squarespace and Shopify. And Squarespace and Shopify have so many problems. I won't go into them now. However, what they don't have is short code that freaks people out. Um, short code just freaks people out. That's all there is to it. Unless you're a developer and you know how to handle it. How many of you are users again? And now you guys are like, well, we're not really users anymore. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to get called out. And do you like short code? How many of you like short code? You're using Shopify? Well, that's actually the problem that we're having. I'm seeing a lot of people are like, eh, I don't know if I can jump into this world of WordPress. Um, so in a way, we're optioning ourselves out of you know, being super awesome and dominant. So something to think about. Uh, there's also deprecation or depreciation. I can never freaking say this word. Is it deprecation? deprecation. I feel like I'm like being mean to them when I say that. Like I'm, but I don't know. That word, I looked it up, so I know that's the right one. Um, but anyway, there's those, those issues. So if you're switching your theme or your plugin, then you've just got code there. And if people have used that in their theme, particularly, uh, now they've got short code throughout all their posts and whatnot, especially if they didn't know that they couldn't use that or transfer, and now they've got no content. These are problems in our community that we need to deal with. Uh, the other thing is theme-specific content. This is actually a real problem because you have all these uh, small business developers out there who are like, oh, cool, I got this, or not developers, owners. They're not developers, not at all. Um, so you've got all these small business owners out there who get this theme that have testimonials, and maybe they have rental listings. There's a lot of retail folks out there. Uh, maybe they have menus, their restaurants, things like that. Um, and they're like, oh, we have a baked in um, you know, menu system to our plugin. And the small business owner or the person you know, trolling theme for is like, oh, that's perfect. How awesome is that? I don't have to think about it, because they don't maybe know that plugins exist or something. Uh, so they do this, and then they go through here, and they get things that say stuff like, coming with excellent reservation system, you can choose either of two forms. Reservation form, where you fill in required information for an easy table booking form. <laughs> or just, yeah, that's it. That's what you get. OK, cool. Um, <laughs> I like going through these. I look at a lot of theme forest themes because I deal with clients that I can't build custom themes for, so I have to get them their own theme. It's just the way that the organization that I work with works. So I look at a lot of theme forest themes. I've bought a lot of theme forest themes with my clients, and I've been like, sorry, we have, can't use this. This is just a piece of trash. Uh, it's terrifying that I have to have my clients spend 70 bucks that I then have to tell them they can't get back because, you know, no refunds and blah, blah, blah. But um, this is the problem. I like looking at them, though, and trying to guess, like, what country they're from, from the, from the writing. That's fun for me. You know, it's the little things that make it entertaining. Um, <coughs> this is that reservation system. So there's this reservation through this, you know, this whatever theme on theme for 60 bucks, peppery. Um, their, their demo's really funny, you should check it out. Uh, not intentionally, just ironically funny. Uh, but then they've got this reservation system that's totally baked into this theme. You know, an unsuspecting small business owner loads this in, loads all their reservations, is doing their thing, something breaks, they update it, and now they've lost their entire functionality of their reservation system. This is really bad. This is something we should all be campaigning against heavily because they get stuck in this, they get locked in this. I mean, unless you're a developer who's like, I'll get you out of that for $5,000. Um, and if you're that developer, we're not friends. Okay, just so you know. Okay, go. Uh, well, the whole point, the question was, shouldn't they have a developer? No, is the answer to that question. Sorry, guys. So there's a lot of things that we need developers for, but what we don't need developers for is for users who are supposed to just be able to use WordPress. That's the whole point. Remember, like you could use it. It's like super easy and friendly, right? All right. The other thing are these baked-in builder plugins uh, that make 
uh, a theme do what it does. So they're like, here's some amazing demos of our beautiful, gorgeous theme. Isn't it awesome? Um, and then they're like, just kidding, you can build it yourself. <laughs> That's basically what ends up happening. So we've got Fusion Builder, and these are from actual theme forest themes. We're like, hey, we have Visual Builder. Aren't we cool? It's super. You're saving you know, $33. And also, now you're a designer because you're building your own theme. What is this? Like, so it doesn't even ever look like the demo. It's very frustrating. Again, this is just making WordPress look bad because the user cannot distinguish between what is WordPress and what is a third-party developer. There's not enough education out there talking about that. Hey, yeah! I don't know what I'm preaching about, but yeah. There are no questions, Elizabeth. OK. Um, so the problem here, we can talk afterwards with the cupcakes. Oh, look, I told you what I have. Because we were getting bored, right? So I just had to throw that in there. Um, all right, so the problem with these themes is that they are walled gardens. This is like the coolest picture ever. I don't know if you can see it. I'm really into it. Um, they, they're trapped here in this desolate wasteland of busted code and things that don't work. And out here is the beautiful WordPress universe that they're not able to get out of because their stuff is trapped. Um, and I, I feel really bad about this. Of course, we know, however, or at least I know, and I'm sure you guys suspect, that uh, these theme developers are intending to build this garden, much like the Facebooks and the Squarespaces and all those folks. They don't actually want anyone to leave, which, again, is contrary to the ethos of WordPress. Your data, you take it where you want. But if you can't get your data out of your theme to move into another theme, it's no longer your data. It's trapped data. Trapped data wants to be free. I don't have a slide for that, but I should have made one. Anyway, just say no to that. Oh, I almost pulled off my microphone. Uh, just say no to that nonsense. If you find a theme that does that, uh, don't use it. Don't, don't recommend it to people. Try to enforce these standards as much as you possibly can, because it's making WordPress a worse solution, which I believe should never, ever be a sentence I say again. OK, OK. All right. So let's talk a little bit about premium themes and marketplaces. Are you guys saying these out loud? OK, it's, we don't have to say it out loud, just as long as you say it in your head. It's very important to me that you do. I just want a commitment from all of you that in your heads. OK, cool. All right. Um, so let's talk about these premium themes. We were kind of already talking about premium themes with that. We've got a ton of options out there for marketplaces. And this is also where WordPress is becoming an unwieldy beast. Um, we've got crazy widely varying UIs from each of these different uh, each of these different themes, even if they're not using a specific themes cut. Uh, theme options panel, their customizers look totally all different, and they all act all differently. Again, because we're basically being so lax with the standards that we're like, hey, do whatever. It's open source. It's super cool and free. Uh, but let's just confuse the heck out of everyone who's trying to move between these systems. Um, so they also tend to be more robust. You know, They've got more stuff. They can do more themes. They've got more sliders. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Um, too robust, perhaps? I would say yes, for the most part, because I feel that themes should be basically like a skin on top of your site. And the robustness, the oomph, should be coming from the general WordPress engine, even custom post types, all that fun stuff, and uh, plugins, which are, in theory, going to last outlive the design. So, um, but that's really the problem with uh, theme marketplaces in general. These are some of them, theme marketplace, mojo marketplace, which are basically the same thing now. Has anyone noticed that? I'm like, Theme Forest, Mojo, same. They're not the same like company, but they have all the same themes, which is really confusing um, to a lot of customers. This is the nightmare. But there are some cute ones in there. These are some uh, clients who I've helped. They've picked out you know, their own theme, and then I help them do it. So there's a cute one. There's a cute one, a little kid on guitar. And we're done with that. Um, uh, I really like organic themes, so if you're looking for places to check out, I like organic themes. If you're a female or you skew toward the feminine design aesthetic, uh, check out Blue Chick. Blue Chick? Blue Chic? I don't know. Um, either way, if you don't skew towards the feminine aesthetic, don't go to that site. Um, and then there's like something like Elegant Themes, which has great themes in theory. Not if you look under the hood, but in theory. But then they have the weird subscription model where it's just like, wait, what am I doing? And do I need every theme ever? So their theme marketplaces out there are, are trying to become more in line with the WordPress you know, ethos and all that, but it's not necessarily working. I have five minutes. OK, sure. Let's keep going. <laughs> it's not going to happen in five minutes. OK, uh, we're going to go with 10 and then less questions. OK, um, no one has any questions. I've answered all of them. 
All right, so uh, talking about child themes, parent themes, and frameworks, I made another chart because, again, I really like charts. So I'm sure most of you know how child themes work at this point, and if you didn't go, there were talks yesterday about it. Uh, but basically, your parent theme holds all your settings, and your child theme holds all your customizations in these fun, uh, customized pages. Um, what child themes do, if you don't know, is they allow for customization without loss of the data or loss of the customizations when you update your theme. This is part of that continuing as you update your theme, you don't lose all your data. So that is really a core part of the WordPress ethos. And I think it's really important to use child themes because of that fact. If you aren't using child themes, then your people are going to lose their data out there. Um, so it's very important to do that. Then there's also frameworks. So I've had a complicated relationship with frameworks. I've tried using them at various points. I recently used Genesis in preparation for this talk, and I will concede it has gotten better. You're welcome. You can hear that on there. It's better. It's better. I'm telling that to the camera so it knows. It's on record. It's better. Um, and it is be the reason it's better is because it's acting more like a parent theme at this point. So it's less of a, you know, you can hook yourself to death. Uh, but it's acting just more like a parent theme and then it's got its nice skins on there. So now they're behaving and really there's not actually that much difference at this point between a framework and its themes and a parent theme and its themes uh, in general. So I, I'm interested to see kind of where these continue to go. Um, of course there are a lot of frameworks out there that have really specific stuff that are happening and they have a lot of under the hood stuff you can do more so than with a parent theme. Uh, but it's worth looking into. Uh, this is uh, Storefront, which is WooCommerce's, well, Woo Themes' is new theme, uh, new framework guy. Um, and then, of course, you've got your Genesis, which I talk about a lot on the water cooler, um, just to annoy Carrie Dills. It's for you again, right there. Um, all right, so uh, that's just Genesis. Looking at that, isn't it pretty? It looks nice now. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, the thing about Genesis, though, what it does have going for it is some really pretty themes. I'll admit that also. They're pretty. Although, I know, right? I'm like conceding all over the place today. Uh, although they all look a lot like this. I'm really tired of the, just the giant picture on top of every website. So do something different, guys. OK. Um, but of course, Genesis also has you know, its own theme options panel. So it's, it's, it's not helping with that. Uh, two plugins, I'm sure you know about these guys. But to make a child theme, the greatest plugin ever, or BCS uh, child theme generator. Love it, learn it, use it. It works really well. Um, and it's the greatest way to make a super simple child theme without going into the back end. And then Code Snippet is a great way when you're you know, on WP Beginner, and WP Beginner tells you to like, put some code in your functions, because beginners totally can do that. Uh, it's a great way to keep the code in the admin, as opposed to breaking open the actual back end, which if you're trying to build a site for a client that's totally self-sufficient, some of you may want them to be less self-sufficient. That's up to you and your business model. Uh, but Code Snippet is a great thing for you users who want to add some custom stuff to their functions file or something like that. Uh, so definitely check that guy out. So when should you build a custom theme? Did you guys see that? This theme different. OK. Just you're not snickering enough, really. Is the, or maybe you're not as into puns as I am. I don't know. Thank you. I just want it from you. Thank you. All right, so when should you build this custom theme? Basically, there are two times when you should build a custom theme or have a custom theme built for you. <coughs> Uh, when you need a specific, defined, or particular uh, design and functionality, I, you have a big, a big company, you don't want to look like everyone else, uh, you have really specific needs that you're trying to accomplish, you have a specific UI that you want to do out there, or if you're just trying to be different in general, and you have a lot of money. Um, I don't know who I should blame for the recent price uptick in uh, WordPress developers, but um, I get a lot of clients that have paid a lot of money for custom themes. Um, good thing for developers. Uh, so yay for us. Um, not necessarily the greatest thing uh, for users in general, but still, uh, there are times when building a custom theme is the right solution. For the record, I do not believe that customizing a, a child theme or a frameworks theme uh, to be doing custom work. Sorry, if you didn't build it, it's not custom, it's configuration. There's a difference. Okay, or customization. I know all the Genesis people hate me right now. I'm sorry. I'll take it. All right. So let's talk a little bit about DIY and builder themes. Uh, there are a ton of these out there right now. Make, Thrive, Divi, Themify, Beaver Builder, uh, which is also a plugin. A lot of these also exist as plugins. Um, but these are themes. Kind of my same uh, comments about the themes in general is that, um, so this is, 
when you're going into the builder theme in make, I believe specifically, and then you've got all your different things. Uh, some of these are degrading better than others, so if you switch out of this theme, the content will still be there. In some cases, they do that. Um, so this is you know, just a, the, a couple basic panels set up in the make theme, and then when I take out the make theme and change themes, it holds most of that customization there, which is a really important thing. Again, for being able to move from theme to theme without getting stuck in that walled garden. So make is a, is a big, I'm a big fan of, um, and there are a couple out there that do degrade nicely. Uh, before you sick your clients on a DIY builder theme, please make sure that if they ever leave that theme, it won't leave a whole entire giant mess behind. Um, this is just an example. There's a, a, cool plug, a cool theme called Story I'm really into. It's from Theme Forest. Uh, it, Made this one. This is for the book bar. I, my books are going in here later today. I'm opening, reopening my bookstore. Plug. Um, and then that's my band. Uh, so you can check that out. Double plug in two slides. You like that? Um, go check out the band. It's awesome. OK. So when you're doing DIY or builder themes, there are two key requirements for if you're able to manage this. One, you have to be tech capable. This is a term that I have now come up with. It's not tech savvy, it's not tech noob, where you have no idea, but tech capable. It means you can kind of poke around and figure it out yourself without like totally freaking out or having a breakdown. Um, I like to say tech capable plus, just because uh, the freak out part can be really high with builder themes. The other thing that you need to be able to do is be design savvy. Because it turns out, if you're customizing and building your own theme, and you're not a designer, even if you're on WordPress and have a great framework or have a great base theme, your site's still going to end up looking like GeoCities, which, unless you're trying to do that intentionally, is not funny. Um, but if you're trying to do that intentionally, that's awesome. So isn't that just the way things are? So you need to be somewhat tech-capable tech and design-savvy to be able to handle those. Um, so let's talk a bit. I have two minutes. This is great. I'm just going to talk even faster. Um, the ever-changing WordPress landscape out there. This is actually the reason that this theme portability is so important, is because the WordPress landscape is changing all of the time. Have you noticed? Anyone? It's all the time? Update, 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 update. Um, design trends are also changing rapidly. If you ask me, not necessarily rapidly enough. Again, parallax. Um, but the WordPress core is changing on an ongoing basis. This was just the releases we had this year. And if you check uh, our our basic way that it's supposed to happen is that we're not really distinguishing between major updates and minor updates. They're all major updates or they're all minor updates. I don't know, however you want to look at it. Point being, that's a lot of updates. So if your theme is not consistently being kept up or if your theme is having issues or has a lot of proprietary data in it, it is very easy to get left behind. And that's fine if you're a developer and you can handle that. It's not fine if a user who's trying to manage and develop their own site. It can be really scary and frightening, especially if it's a small business and that person's business relies on that theme functioning. So just some more stuff to think about. And who's excited about 4.4? Yes! I am totally excited about the REST API and all the fun date things we can do with the data. Oh, I love data. OK. Um, point being, end theme dependency. <laughs> this is my, my call. Um, I love themes. I think themes are great. I love building themes in general. Yes. Ah, yes. The, the fist. Um, this is important. So I want you to all, if you take nothing else out of this talk, this is important. Uh, we need to be not theme dependent, but WordPress dependent, and using our data that's in that, that sexy database that we've got going on. Also, it's important to stay updated. Yeah, get it? Thank you, thank you. OK. Um, with the code and the design, it's really important that your, uh, your site, your, your client's site, stay updated. And they're not using a three-year-old theme because of the fact that that code and the design trends change all the time. So this WordPress is a very now-based world that we're in. And we need to keep it that way. The web changes a lot also. Anyone notice that? Uh, but if we're going to keep our clients at the top, and we're going to stay at the awesome dominance level of WordPressness that we all know it should be because it's awesome and free and has a great ethos and is good for humanity in general. Um, then we need to keep our client stuff updated and not be lazy. All right, so how should you be choosing your theme? You seem to like it. Um, this has nothing to do with themes at all. How about that? This has to do with general understanding of how websites work. Um, what are your site goals? What is the voice and the brand that you're trying to express, whether you're a blogger or a business? Does, these are the things you need to figure out first. Who are you targeting? If you're targeting you know, teenage boys, 
your site can look a lot different than if you're targeting 40 year old second time mothers. They have different design expectations, they're looking for different things. So just going into theme forests and choosing designs or choosing designs for your clients, um, just randomly uh, based off because you think it's cool, because you like parallax, um, is not a good choice. You need to figure these things out first and then it'll make that theme selection choice or the theme customization choices that you make a lot easier if you keep all of these things in mind, including the amount of customization that your client or you can afford and the ease of use. This is really, really important. We need to keep this stuff easy to use or guess what? People won't use it. Guess what happens if nobody uses WordPress? Anybody? Anybody? We all go back to Flash. Yes. No. <laughs> Drupal? I don't know. I don't know. I don't really want to know. That's the point. It's like, I'm happy with this. It's working out. Let's keep it going. Um, there's not a lot of other software solutions out there that are doing what WordPress is doing and is capable of doing. Um, so that's really important. So again, this is the really way you should focus on your design. What's the layout look like? What are the basic styles without putting in a plugin and customizing everything to death? And what is the overall look design of? That's the only things you should be really choosing a theme off of. That's about it. There's more. What? What's the developer support like? What okay, yeah, yes, there is more. However, I have a limited amount of time. So <laughs> I'm just really trying to make my points here. That's all. We can get into philosophical discussions afterwards. Okay. Uh, and to keep this core ethos close to your heart at all times, we are making decisions here, not options. Um, so good basic themes that I really like. I love Simone. Uh, it's a great place to start people. It's by Morten Rand Hendrickson. Uh, who is the lynda.com WordPress educator. He's awesome and Norwegian, which is not why he's awesome, but he is Norwegian. And so when you listen to the lynda.com things, he's got a great accent. Uh, Generate Press is a really great, super customizable basic theme, and 2016 looks awesome. Um, I've used it a little bit, not on development, obviously. I even really like 2012, super big fan. You can customize that really nicely with a lot of things, so don't let it go away just because it's a scary year. Um, there's Simone. That's what it's doing, looking all good. There's the, uh, that's Generate Press. Yeah, that's it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the future of WordPress themes. The future is the theme customizer. This is where everything's going because the conversation in the WordPress making WordPress world is all about the customizer and how we can do front end editing because that's what Shopify is doing, that's what Squarespace is doing, and that's what people are really missing from WordPress is they, don't, they call it the uh, design and surprise or save and surprise where you save something here and then you're like, oh, what does that look like on this page? Um, so that's kind of the next hurdle that's going to be like handled in uh, developing WordPress sites. Uh, so the front end editing and then style editing possibly being baked into core so you wouldn't have to have typography plugins and color style plugins and things like that. So that that would just be a basic thing, uh, being able to modify those different styles. So that's coming. And then I don't know what's going to go down with Woo Themes because as most of you should and maybe know, uh, Automatic recently bought Woo Themes which I'm super happy about because it stabilizes WooCommerce, which is very important. Um, and I know that they're going to be able to do good stuff with that. I can't wait to see what it is, what they do with the Woo framework, what they do with all those themes. Um, so that's exciting. So let's talk a little bit about the eternal truth of word, uh, websites in general. Content, the only reason that anyone is going to a website, it's actually not because of the layout, shocker. Um, what, if you take, you can take Craigslist and uh, what's that other one, um, Wikipedia as examples. People go there all the time because of the information. If you have no content on your website, the most beautiful slider, swirly thing in the world is not going to do anything for you. Um, so the goal really is to find the best vehicle for you to be able to create and publish content on a consistent basis or for your clients to be able to do that. In order to do that, that needs to be easy to use. Just remember. It always seems impossible until it is done. All right, that was fun. Did you get this? Okay. Um, the slides will be online later. If you want to stay in touch with me, you can text, check, I'm so techy, right? 66866, text DIY to that number, and then I'll message you back, and uh, you can begin on my mailing list. You're not actually text messaging me, so we're not going like, to have a real conversation. Um, we can afterwards, and I'm going to bring up some cupcakes too. Uh, thank you guys so much. Don't forget to do your reviews and that fun thing. Thanks for hanging out. <laughs>